Well, grace and peace, everyone. Welcome again to our Believing God's Word broadcast, where God in His Word is the final authority. That's what we're making God in His Word, the final authority. And we just hope you're enjoying these sessions on living under the Lordship of Jesus. Like I said, He is our Savior. He delivered us. That's all Savior and salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He is all of that. But we're not just going to stop there with him. He's also not just our deliverer. He is our Lord. He, you know, God made him king over all the earth. In our last session, we talked about that. And let me read something that... um from 1 Corinthians 8, 5, and 6. It's just so good. It says, For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be many God be gods many and lords many, but unto us, see, we got people in my well, there's a God, that's God, sun, God, moon, God, all these different things. He said, But unto us there is but one God, <laughs> the Father. And of whom are all things, and we in him. And one Lord, one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Isn't that good? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the world and they, that's everything in it, the gold, the silver, Therein, uh, Psalms 50, 10, 12 says, For every beast of the forest is mine. God is in that. And the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. And if I were hungry, hungry, he says, I wouldn't even tell you. I don't need permission from anybody for the world is mine, said the Lord. And the fullness thereof. So these are things that I just like to remind people of that listen we're in christ we're in his kingdom his kingdom is in us jesus said luke what was that luke 11 uh 20 well you have to it'll come up on the screen um where jesus said for the kingdom of god shall be in you you see so that's important the kingdom of god is in us and we're in the kingdom of god so remember in in um I'm going to read this too, because we're talking about the authority that we have, the believer have, um, under the Lordship of Jesus. Because Jesus, and we're going to look at the, the authority of, you know, the privileges of being, uh, the benefits of living under the Lordship of Jesus. Because we inherit his name. His name belongs to us. The name of Jesus. The fight against um, the unseen forces that Satan and his cohorts have arrayed against us and to use his name against inanimate things that's, 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 that's forming against us. Amen. We have absolute authority in the name of Jesus. And I just, I just get excited just thinking about that. You know, you have authority over sickness and disease, you know, and we, but we don't talk about it. The Bible said, how can they believe in whom we're not heard? They have not heard. So I want to be the one to talk about it. And I want you to talk about it. And then who you talk to talk about it. And you'll find out that's how faith came. By hearing and hearing by the word of God. <laughs> so we're putting it out there into the atmosphere. Because the world is waiting for you and I to speak God's word. Amen. Now, so let me get to Hebrews. And... And the Bible says in the third verse, who, that Jesus being the brightness of God's glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. And this is another thing about living under the lordship of Jesus. Jesus said in Luke 6, 46 and 48, he says, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So we got to go in and say, let's see what Jesus said. Jesus said, in my name, you can cast out devils. Jesus said, if you have 
faith of a mustard tree see you will say to this mountain be thou removed don't talk about the mountain speak to it somebody say amen so Jesus said a lot of things. The works I do, you shall do also in greater works than these. See? So he said, don't call. He said, why say, call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever come to me and hear it my sayings and do them. Otherwise, he just said, act just like he act. <laughs> do what he did. I will show you to whom he's like. And he talks about us being like a man. Um, Luke 4, 6, 46, being like a man which built a house, dig deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. Now, the Bible says Jesus is the rock of all ages. That rock that followed them in 1 Corinthians 10, he said that rock that followed that group in the Old Testament through the wilderness, he said that rock was Christ. It actually says that rock was Christ. He's talking about building our lives off of him. Hallelujah. Upon the rock, and when the flood arose and the streams beat vehemently, violently upon that house and could not shake it because it was founded upon the rock. So in other words, don't be alarmed when things don't look like they're going right in your household and in your job. You are building your life upon a rock. Say, I cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. It could, yeah, I can, I will not be shaken because it's founded upon Christ. That rock was Christ. That's the authority we have. We have that blessed assurance when we live under the Lordship of Jesus. Glory to God. And, and, and what I was saying here back to Hebrews, the third verse, he says, that upholding all things by the word of his power. Notice, not the power of his word, but the word of his power. It's the power. When God spoke, let there be light, that word had enough power in it to create light. And the moon and the, and the stars and the sun wasn't even created yet. <laughs> it was only created on the fourth day. You know, so that's the power. The Bible says he... He, um, that he, uh, we through, we understand through faith that the world was framed, created by the word of God. The word of God created everything here that exists. And he's telling us who's born of the word of God, 1 Peter 1, 23, birthed into the kingdom of God. He's telling us that, that he's upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels now i don't want to read too much because i'm going to cut into too much of my time but what i want you to see is we go right to the seventh verse the sixth verse and he said again when he bring it in the first begotten into the world that's after jesus went through the death, burial, resurrection. Jesus got born again. That's a hard thing for people to believe because Jesus became sin for us, the Bible says. He that knew no sin became sin that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Jesus, he took all of our sins in his body on a tree. We being dead to sins, 1 Peter 2, 24, we can now live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were back in past tense healed see and this is so important because here god is saying again again he bring it the first begotten into the world and said let all the angels of god worship him not we worship angels the angels got to worship him and and of the angels he said who make his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire I know I'm very excited. These scriptures just gets me too excited. I mean, the magnitude of our authority, the magnitude of our relationship with God, who is our father, and we're his sons, and we're birthed into his kingdom, his, his this kingdom that which he created everything that we can see out of his kingdom through his word. And we have that right and privilege in the name of Jesus. 
Watch this. And he says, until the sun, he says, makes his angel spirits, his ministers of flame of fire, talking about the the angels, he said, but until the sun, he said, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is the scepter of thy kingdom. The word scepter, excuse me, it means ruling standard. Ruling standard. He rules in righteousness. Righteousness is the ruling standard of God's kingdom. That's why everybody that's born into the kingdom of God, you have to be made righteous. You can't earn it. The Bible says, and the abundance of grace, 517 Romans, and the gift of righteousness. Who knew no sin became sin for us. We might be made the righteousness of God. So everything birthed into God's kingdom, you and I, we had to be made righteous. And Jesus himself, 1 Corinthians 1.30, he is our wisdom righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Can you say amen? This is just a powerful thing. This all belongs to us, people. You know? Now look, he said, so unto the Son, he said, thy throne, O God, is a scepter, is forever and ever, a scepter of righteousness, is a scepter, ruling standard of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved, and notice he said, thy throne, but unto the Son, he said, thy throne, O God. So he's calling the Son God. Unto the son, he said, yeah, my angels, they are ministering spirit. Yeah, my angels, they're, they're, they're uh, I'm sorry, they are, they are, they are ministers, they are angels, he make them spirits, and his ministers are flame of fire. But unto my son, I said, oh God. To the son, he said, oh God. Unto the son, he said, thy throne, oh God. Because he's calling the son God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we are sons of God too. Ain't that good? That's just so beautiful. He said, it's, um, and for, it's forever and ever a scepter, ruling standard of righteousness. It's the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, I want to, I don't know if I can move anywhere else in this. So, but I can go here. The benefits of living under the Lordship of Jesus. Just, we talked about confession. Jesus, you're Lord. Jesus, you're the Son of God. Jesus, you came in the flesh. <laughs> Jesus, you're the Christ. Those are four confessions. You'll find them in First John. You know, um, First John, the epistles of John, it's not the gospel, but the epistles, you'll see those four confessions. He's Lord. He's the Christ. He came in the flesh because he condemned sin in the flesh for us. And then he is, you know, the Bible says he's Lord, he's Christ, and all of that. So those, those are, but say this over yourself. We say this, Jesus, I confess you as Lord over my, over my workplace, over my business, whatever your employment status is. See him as Lord over that. Because you and I are sharing into his lordship, you know, because the Bible says he is king of kings and what? Lord of lords. So that means you and I share in his lordship. We share in his kingship. We'll talk about that in the next session. I'm trying to close these sessions up. Some, but it's just pulling at me. Um, but but this is so important because this is our identity, living under the lordship of Jesus. We have benefits for living under. He's the vine and we're the branches. And the branch gets his life from the vine. And because the life is in the vine going through the branches, cause the branch to become fruitful. And this is it. That's still a principle of living under the Lordship of Jesus. He's healed. You should be healed. He, he has authority. You have authority. We are one. The Bible says we're his body, the fullness of himself. Ephesians 1.23. See, but we haven't been thinking. We keep thinking apart from him. We are are heirs of God and join heirs with Christ Jesus. Here's, here's what it means to live under the lordship of a benevolent kingdom. Jesus is benevolent. He, is, he says, learn of me, I am meek and lowly. Come, I'm going to give you rest in Mark, Matthew what, 11, 28. He talks about, read that scripture. But I'm, let me give you a definition, then I'm going to close it. 
Living under a lordship in a benevolent kingdom, kingdom protects the citizens. The citizens from competing competition with other fellow citizens for resources. The Bible says he is no respect of a person. He is good to all that call upon him. He is good unto all. The Lord is good. He's rich to unto all that call upon him. See, we don't ever have to compete and be jealous. We don't ever have to um, to be, um, you know, just trying to, um, you know, strife and all of those things and thinking one loves God loves one more than us. No, he's good to all that call upon him. Um, and it destroys such elements as jealousy, fear, deceit, and covetousness, hoarding up. I mean, we should be benevolent givers just like he is because we, we can never run out. Hallelujah. Our, he is our supply. My God said so what? Supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, who is what? Our Lord. See that? And it's a true kingdom. The Lord in a true kingdom. He's, his kingdom runs off of truth. We'll talk about that at one point too. The Lord owns all the resources and distributes the same as he determines. Um, he's given us everything, the Bible says, that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. 2 Peter 1. Three, that have called us to virtue and glory. And he says, whereby are, um, are given unto us the exceeding great and precious, precious promises. All the promises of God, 2 Corinthians 1, is yes and amen. They belong to you and I. We don't have to fight and, and, and try to and be jealous and all of these things and fearful there's enough for everybody. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He says, whenever we, he gives, whatever he, whenever he gives to a citizen, it is never for personal ownership, but it's always for stewardship. So as we submit to our King Jesus as Lord of our lives, it positions every citizen who's a son to receive all that the king has. And some of you say, amen. Boy, that's exciting. I submit, Lord. Oh, I submit to you, Jesus. Jesus, you are Lord. Hallelujah. And that's just how it is. We, we're going to have to stop here. And I hope you got something out of this. Uh, we're still, you know, just still um, asking you to press like and to subscribe if you haven't already. And to share with family, friends. And we are uh, operation get the word out, believing God's word, where God and his word is the final authority. And we're just, just looking for people to help get the word out. You know, we're giving you all the scriptures that we know that you can share with others because the Lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it. So I will just like to say until we meet next time, just Keep making God and his word the final authority. And we'll see you in the next session.